Welcome to BEFM Drama. Don't be too scared. I know we've been getting a little spooky recently with this new miniseries performing the works of Edgar Allan Poe. But today, we're bringing you some love stories. Oh, wait, sorry. Uh, I regret to inform you that all the loves are dead. You see, we're adapting a trio of short tales about long-lost loves. Poe loved writing melodramatic missives about the women he pined for long after they'd left the mortal coil. We'll begin with a short story pining for a woman named Annabelle Lee. It's about a man who longs to be with her, but she has gone away. Not to another city, or to another lover, but to a tomb beside the sea. Please enjoy Farnaz Parasti performing BFM Drama's production of Annabelle Lee. It was many and many a year ago, in a kingdom by the sea, that a maiden there lived whom you may know by the name of Annabel Lee. And this maiden she lived with no other thought than to love and be loved by me. She was a child and I was a child in this kingdom by the sea. But we loved with a love that was more than love, I and my Annabel Lee, with a love that the winged seraphs of heaven coveted her and me. And this was the reason that long ago, in this kingdom by the sea, a wind blew out of a cloud by night, chilling my Annabel Lee, so that her high-born kinsman came and bore her away from me, to shut her up in a sepulchre in this kingdom by the sea. The angels, not half so happy in heaven, went envying her and me. Yes. That was the reason, as all men know, in this kingdom by the sea, that the wind came out of a cloud, chilling and killing my Annabel Lee. But our love, it was stronger by far than the love of those who were older than we, of many far wiser than we, and neither the angels in heaven above, nor the demons down under the sea, can ever dissever my soul from the soul of the beautiful Annabel Lee. For the moon never beams without bringing me dreams of the beautiful Annabel Lee. And the stars never rise but I see the bright eyes of the beautiful Annabel Lee. And so all the night tide I lie down by the side of my darling, my darling, my life, my bride, in her sepulchre there by the sea, in her tomb by the side of the sea. Next up, we have Poe's most famous tale of all. The story of a man torn up over the loss of a woman named Lenore. He wishes she would return home to him, but alas, that is impossible. She is no longer of the living. But he does get a visitor, just not the visitor he'd hoped for. It's the terrifying tale of a man uh, who is scared of a bird look his love died he's got a lot of stuff going on okay it's an emotional time he's allowed to be scared of a bird i'm not going to judge the guy please enjoy andrew murphy performing the raven once upon a midnight dreary while i pondered weak and weary over many a quaint and curious volume of forgotten lore, while I nodded, nearly napping, suddenly there came a tapping, as of someone gently rapping, rapping at my chamber door. "'Tis some visitor," I muttered, tapping at my chamber door, only this and nothing more. Ah, distinctly I remember, it was in the bleak December, and each separate dying ember wrought its ghost upon the floor. Eagerly I wished the moral, vainly I had sought to borrow from my books, surcease of sorrow, sorrow for the lost Lenore. For the rare and radiant maiden whom the angels named Lenore, nameless here 
forevermore. In the silken, sad, uncertain rustling of each purple curtain, thrilled me, filled me with fantastic terrors never felt before, so that now, to still the beating of my heart, I stood repeating, "'Tis some visitor entreating entrance at my chamber door, some late visitor entreating entrance at my chamber door. This is it, and nothing more. Presently my soul grew stronger, hesitating then no longer. Sir, said I, or madam, truly your forgiveness I implore. But the fact is I was napping, and so gently you came rapping, and so faintly you came tapping, tapping at my chamber door. That I scarce was sure I heard you, Here I open wide the door, darkness there, and nothing more. Deep into the darkness peering, long I stood there wondering, fearing, doubting, dreaming, dreams no mortal ever dared to dream before. But the silence was unbroken, and the stillness gave no token, and the only word there spoken was a whispered word, Lenore. This I whispered, and an echo murmured back the word, Lenore. Merely this and nothing more. Back into the chamber turning, all my soul within me burning, soon again I heard a tapping somewhat louder than before. Surely, said I, surely that is something at my window lattice. Let me see then what thereat is, and this mystery explore. Let my heart be still a moment, and this mystery explore. Tis the wind and nothing more. Open here I flung the shutter, when with many a flirt and flutter, in there stepped the stately raven of saintly days of yore. Not the least obeisance made he, not a minute stopped or stayed he, but with mane of lord or lady perched above my chamber door, perched upon a bust of palace just above my chamber door, perched and sat and nothing more. Then this ebony bird beguiling my sad fancy into smiling, by the grave and stern decorum of the countenance it wore, Though thy crest be shorn and shaven, thou, I said, art sure no craven, ghastly grim and ancient raven, wandering from nightly shore. Tell me what thy lordly name is on night's plutonian shore, quoth the raven. Nevermore. Much I marveled this ungainly, foul to hear discourse so plainly, though its answer little meaning, little relevancy bore. For we cannot help agreeing that no living human being, ever yet blessed, with seeing bird above his chamber door, bird or beast upon the sculptured bust above his chamber door, with such name as... Nevermore. But the raven, sitting lonely on the placid bust, spoke only that one word, as if his soul in that one word did outpour. Nothing further than he uttered, not a feather than he fluttered, till I scarcely more than muttered, other friends have flown before, On the morrow he will leave me, as my hopes have flown before. Then the bird said, Nevermore. Startled at the stillness, broken by reply so aptly spoken, Doubtless, said I, what it utters, its only stock and store, Caught from some unhappy master, whom unmerciful disaster, Followed fast and followed faster, till his songs one burden bore, Till the dirges of his hope, that melancholy burden bore, of never, never more. But the raven still beguiling all my fancy into smiling, straight I wheeled a cushioned seat in front of bird and bust and door. Then upon the velvet sinking, I betook myself to linking, fancy unto fancy, thinking what this ominous bird of yore, what this grim, ungainly, ghastly, gaunt of ominous bird of yore, meant in croaking. Never more. This I sat engaged in guessing, but no syllable expressing. To the fowl whose fiery eyes now burned into my bosom's core. This and more I sat divining, with my head at ease reclining, on the cushion's velvet lining that the lamp-like gloated o'er. But whose velvet violet lining, with the lamp-like gloating o'er, she shall press, ah, oh, never more. Then methought the air grew denser, Perfume from an unseen censer, swung by seraphim whose footfalls tinkled on the tough floor. Wretch, I cried, thy God hath lent thee, by these angels he hath sent thee, respite 
respite in Nepenthe from the memories of Lenore. Quaff, O oh, quaff this kind Nepenthe, and forget this lost Lenore, quoth the raven. Nevermore! Prophet, said I, thing of evil. Prophet still, if bird or devil, whether tempter sent, or whether tempest tossed thee here ashore, desolate yet undaunted, on this desert land enchanted, on this home by horror haunted, tell me truly, I implore, is there, is there, balm in Gilead? Tell me, tell me, I implore, quoth the raven. Nevermore. Prophet, said I, thing of evil. Prophet still, if bird or devil, by the heaven that bends above us, by the God we both adore, tell this soul with sorrow laden, if within this distant Aden, it shall clasp a sainted maiden, whom the angels name Lenore. Clasp a rare and radiant maiden, whom angels name Lenore, quoth the raven. Nevermore. Be that word our sign is parting, bird or friend, I shrieked up starting. Get thee back into the tempest and the night's plutonian shore. Leave no black plume as a token of that lie thy soul hath spoken. Leave my loneliness unbroken. Quit the bust above my door. Take thy beak from out my heart and take thy form from off my door, quoth the raven. Nevermore. And the raven never flitting, still is sitting, still is sitting on the pallet bust of palace just above my chamber door and his eyes have all the seeming of a demon's that is dreaming and the lamp light o'er him streaming throws his shadow on the floor and my soul from out that shadow that lies floating on the floor shall be lifted nevermore Our final tale is about a beloved woman named Irene, but she does not return those affections. She can't. You've probably figured out the pattern by now. She's dead. Poe sure did have a type. This is Farnaz Parasti reading The Sleeper. Midnight in the month of June, I stand beneath the mystic moon. An obiate vapor, dewy, dim, exhales from out her golden dream, and softly, dripping drop by drop, upon the quiet mountain top, steals drowsily and musically into the universal valley. The rosemary nods upon the grave, the lily lolls upon the wave, wrapping the fog about its breast. The ruin moulders into rest, looking like Livy. See? The lake a conscious slumber seems to take and would not for the world awake. O oh, beauty sleeps, and lower lies Irene with her destinies. O oh, lady bright, can it be right this window open to the night? The wanton airs from the treetop laughingly through the lattice drop the bodiless airs a wizard rout flit through thy chamber in and out and wave the curtain canopy so filthily, so fearfully above the closed and fringed lid neath which thy slumbering soul lies hid that over the flood and down the wall like ghosts the shadows rise and fall O oh, lady dear hast thou no fear why and what art thou dreaming here? Sure thou art come o'er far off seas, a wonder to these garden trees. Strange is thy pallor, strange thy dress, strange above all thy length of tress and this all solemn silentness. The lady sleeps, oh, may her sleep, which is enduring so be deep. Heaven have her in its sacred keep. This chamber changed for one more holy, this bed for one more melancholy. I pray to God that she may lie forever with unopened eye while the pale sheeted ghosts go by. My love, she sleeps, oh, may her sleep add it is lasting so be deep. Soft may the worms about her creep, 
far in the forest, the deem and all. For her may some tall vault unfold, some vault that oft has flung its black and winged palance fluttering back, triumphant over the crested palls of her grand family funeral. Some sepulchre remote alone, against whose portal she hath thrown in childhood many an iron stone. Some tomb from out whose sounding door she ne'er shall force an echo more. Thrilling to think, poor child of sin, it was the dead who groaned within. Thank you for listening to BEFM Drama. This was Annabelle Lee, The Raven and the Sleeper by Edgar Allan Poe. Three stories about dead exes and sad boys. They were read by Fernaz Parasti and Andrew Murphy. Path of the Goblin King, Moorland, Ghost Story, and Night of Chaos are by Kevin McLeod of Incompetech and released under Creative Commons Attribution License. Tune in next time when we'll take a peek at Poe's more lighthearted side with a creepy comedy called Some Words with a Mummy. Thank you for listening.